Drawing text to the screen is a three-step process. Each one of the steps can have their own little bit of complexities, but if you take a look at example code that we've got in the book, it's usually not too bad to get text onto the screen. The first step is to figure out what font and how big you want the font to be when you draw it down on the screen. That's pretty straightforward and it makes sense because if you just tell a computer to draw something on the screen it has no idea what style of font you want or how large it is without doing that step. The next step seems a little bit odd but step number two what you end up doing is creating a stamp where you are going to specify the text that goes on the stamp and later we'll put that onto the screen. This create stamp You tell the computer what you want to appear on the screen, like you win, what font. So it'll combine those two and it'll put it on the bottom of the stamp. Of course it'd be like backwards, but I can't write that way. Step number three, you take that stamp you tell it where on the screen, like 250, 250, you want the stamp to go, and you stamp it there on the screen. Those three steps will allow you to put text onto the screen. Let's see how it actually looks when you code it. Step number one, select the font. I'm going to create a brand new variable called font, and I'm going to set it equal to, I'm going to use the pygame.font dot font command. This variable I've created, I can have as many fonts as I want and I can put each different font into a different variable name. In this case I've only got one font I'm just calling my variable name font. This is the Pygame library we've loaded, the font package, and this is a font object we're creating. It's not actually a function. We'll talk more about it when we get into classes. This is the default font and if you just put none in here, it'll just go to the default font. We will show you how to specify the different fonts here in a bit. And this is the size. Now, 25 points seems like it'd be a huge size, but with Pygame, everything seems a lot smaller than what you're used to with the word processor when it comes to font size. Step number two, I'm going to create that stamp that goes onto our screen. This command looks like the following. I'm creating a variable that will point to the stamp that I've created. The variable can be really any name that you like. In this case, I've just called it text. This font that I'm using right here is the variable that I'm using here. I'm telling this font to render my text. So this is a function name. And then I pass it three parameters. The text that I want to draw, whether it's going to be anti-aliased, which almost always you're going to want to have true in here. If you have false, your text is going to look a little bit more jagged and less smooth. Then the color. Color, anti-aliasing, which really should always be set to true, and your text. Now you know we're not done because we need step number three. I'm going to specify the screen that I'm drawing on and I'm going to use the function name called blit. I'm going to blit the text to the screen which really is just basically saying stamp something to the screen. We'll use this later on when we do bitmap graphics too. And where I want to draw. Those are the three steps that are required in order to actually draw something to the screen. Let's run it. The 100, 100 that I have right here is the coordinate that's going to be the upper left corner of where that text is drawn. A common mistake is to specify that if you want the text at the bottom of the screen, you specify the bottom of the screen and then the text gets drawn down here off the screen. Keep in mind, if you want to draw it at the bottom of the screen, you need to draw it not just at the bottom, but up a little bit so that your text appears right here, because you're specifying the top left of where that text is going to appear. 
you don't want to specify the right edge of the screen and have the text be written over here. Just keep in mind what that coordinate specifies. This runs just fine. I can actually speed up my program if I want in order to run it by using a little bit of logic, such as right now the program is telling the computer what font I'm using 20 times per second, and that font never changes. I can take this out and move it up here instead and create my font before the program starts running then I only run it once rather than 20 times per second. My font's not changing. I'm just fine putting this up at the top of the screen. If we don't want to take the default font and we want to specify our own font to be used for our program, this is actually a really good thing to do because if I want to redistribute this program later to somebody else and create an installer for it so my friends can play the game, then this will make this next step a whole lot easier because just leaving it as none doesn't allow me to actually redistribute the program which seems kind of odd but that's the way it is. In order to specify the font first of all I have to find the font that I want. I need to bring up the Windows file browser. The quickest way to bring up the Windows file browser is to hold down the Windows button like it's a shift key and hit E for Explore. So Window E brings up the file Explorer the next thing that I want to do is click on the C volume right here. Then I'm going to go into the Windows directory. So I'm going to click on Windows. Double click there. Next thing I'm going to look for is the font directory. There we go, fonts. So I'm going to double click on the fonts directory. Here are all the different fonts that I've got on the computer. So I can look through that. I can find the font that I want. I happen to be fond of Century School Book. That's the Simpson College font. Once I found the font that I want, I'm either going to do one of two things. I can right click on it and choose properties, but you'll see in this case I don't have the option to do properties, and that's because there are actually several different fonts inside of this whole Century School Book font folder. In this case there's only one and I can do properties. If there's no properties button, I want to select open a new window now I can see I've got bold, bold italic, italic, regular. I'm going to select bold. I'm going to right click and now I finally got my properties. And there's the name of the file I want. Finally, after all that, I found the name of the file I want. I'm going to right click and then do copy. Click OK. Close this window. Close this window. And now in the place of none, I'm going to do a double quote and put my font name. If I run it right now, it's still not going to work because it doesn't know what folder the font is. It is not smart enough to go to the Windows folder to figure out the font. So I'm going to do C colon because it's on the C drive, then a forward slash Windows, forward slash fonts, and then another forward slash. Those of you who are really familiar with Windows know that actually Windows uses a backslash and you can use a backslash, you actually need two backslashes if you're working with this because of how strings have that whole escape string thing going. Remember we've got backslash n, backslash quotes. I'm just going to use a forward slash. It'll work just fine in the case of Python and I don't have to worry about the whole backslash escaping string bit. Now if I run the program, I've got my text in the font that I want. Next up, People often want to display a timer or some sort of score on the screen. Displaying a score on the screen, not too hard, but you have to keep in mind a few different types of things. Let's say I have a variable called score and I've set it to 100. I want to print out the score. What I can't do is this. I can't do score and then comma my variable score. I could use comma and put things together with a print statement. You can't do that with a font statement. It, the font render statement just doesn't understand the extra parameter here. I could use a plus sign in order to stitch them together, but Python gets really confused when you add a number and a string together. So that doesn't work. What I actually need is an str around my score. This will take the score that I have right here, which is a number, convert it to a string, 
and then add that string to the string that I already have right here, the score. So I'll end up with something like score 100. Several steps, but it does work. I run the program, and I've got score 100. I can see when I do this that it really would look a little bit better if I were to put a space in here and I can put a space in there by just simply adding a space right here after the colon and before the double quotes. Now you know how to write text to the screen, select the font that you want, and even do dynamic text that shows you the current score that we've got out on the screen.